good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is my uh, greatest honor to celebrate, once again, a, a beautiful day in the likes and the name and memory and legacy of my dear baby sister. I always put it in the context of my baby sister, um, Veronica Bruce Butler. And um, I am just so directed and motivated and inspired by the, the tremendous spirit that she left of uh, love, peace, and compassion for others. And oftentimes I'm, um, I get emotional when I see that people who are going through and then they're encouraged just by a word, by a deed, or consideration. And through that act, I, I, I become somewhat touched knowing that that is that spirit that I, my goal is to help transcend it to other people when they become with hope in, how are you, Senator? Yes, and um, thank you. And uh, how they're encouraged by that, and I'm even further encouraged by, it, it, I, I'm seeing that her spirit and what she left, it becomes almost like a tool that I see that's really bringing Brockton together under one roof, and I'm grateful, I'm deeply honored to have such distinguished uh, residents of Brockton here and supporters that little old us, just a small organization, and we're doing big things, big things because it's, it's just pure and it's real and it's something that centers around it, something that so, that's so amazing, amazing and powerful that it affects us in so many different ways, not just the body, but our, our soul, our spirit, our economics, our families, and it's just so, so powerful. And I think as we rally around, um, even just to talk about what's happening, it's so powerful in itself. Um, because many years ago, cancer was one of those things that we say, most people at the time didn't even say the word cancer. They abbreviated, almost afraid and shamed to say, they said, oh, Mr. Jones got the big C. Is that you guys remember? Because we're old school. It's a big C. They didn't talk about that. But now, thank God for the, the technology and the, um, the braveness of um, science and people willing to share. You know, it's okay, yes, because of technology, it can be uh, remediated quickly and resolved. And so then it becomes not a death sentence, but a, a, an opportunity for hope, an opportunity to, to be encouraged, do something. And so I'm really, really encouraged by that. I was further encouraged by when we did the opening of our office at 33 Dover Street, when the mayor and the senator and some city councils were there, and how grateful I was that they were just so candid and just opened up. And that's special. That's really special because it's, a lot of times people may see a sickness or a disease as a, a negative or something that they can say, well, Mm, you're not as good. Mm, you're not so strong. So a lot of times people hold that against you and try to use that condition against someone. And so again, I'm so grateful for that opportunity, even for our cancer survivor angels, to uh, come out and share. And we have one that's a survivor now, 21 years. And isn't it? Yeah. And, and we have another one this month, survived 11 years. And so this is what, yeah. And, and so I'm so encouraged by that because um, they're not like holding it to themselves. Sometimes people will gain stuff and they like want to harbor it and they want to hide it and be selfish about it. They're sharing the story saying, yeah, this is the news that I got. This was my reaction. Oh, I didn't, uh, I didn't believe it. So I got a second opinion. All right, okay, fine. I put the gloves on. We got to work this. And, and so they did. And fighting it every day and just, dealing with it, strong faith, believing that all things are possible, because if it happened to him or her, it can happen for me either way. And so, um, again, uh, when I thought about the importance of having different events, and again, I see it's a great opportunity to bring the community together, our officials and our leaders and a business community, and now our school representatives, because again, this is really, really powerful. And I say with respect to my sister, who I still dearly love, all of this is not even about her. It's really not about her. It's about the people that her spirit is able to touch. 
and they can feel encouraged because when we're focusing on not just the survivor, but now we're also extending and expanding and helping the families, caregivers, and also supporters, because we're all in this together. And it's our goal. As soon as, as much, as many resources, as much we can get, we just want to put it right back out to all those who are in need. And as information, I'm finding this as an opportunity to now also bring in other organizations who are also doing great work, really great work. And so if, if time will allow, and you know, I'll make sure time allows, and I want to allow some of the other organization representatives to kind of share in a synopsis of what they're doing. Because we feel that uh, people, when we're going through in the community, they can be experiencing challenges in different facets. So you may have someone who's maybe going through cancer. They may need assistance with their mindset, mindfulness. And then they may also be homeless or on the verge of homeless. Or, you know, them so different organizations come together. It's not about the organization or its leaders. It's about the people who we touch. And that's really what the, the bottom line is, is with that. And so this being the day of, I call it, spring is in the air. We want to celebrate and thank God for the beautiful weather. Thank, thank God we're at a, at a moment in space where the masks have come off and asking God's blessing to keep, protect us as we move forward with that. And also just in terms of our idea to bring in together, the community together. And I want to thank uh, Brockton Community Access for always being there for us, sharing our story because, it's, again, this is documented. And so this, um, so we can show our faces, show our faith, and show our um, commitment to reaching out, reaching out. Because when we're gone off the scene and those uh, videos are watched again or the stories are read and, and books are written uh, and read, then we can see that that was not in vain. The efforts and the steps that we were, we were really committed to that. And so this is again, this, um, spring is in the air. So today we want to uh, light a candle. We want to light up springtime and light up a life. And that's really what. And as part of today, I intentionally set out, because being an educator or a teacher in Brockton Public Schools, and a lot of times it's about messaging. You can reach, my great-grandmother used to say all the time, there's a way to say anything you want to say, but you have to be thoughtful how you say it. And so it's about wording. People say, so you can say the same thing. And I know for many years, as I said, sometimes people look down on others who have conditions or you know, disabilities or abilities. And uh, it's really about the thing. So when I talk about the cancer victim, diabetes victim, AIDS victim, that is so, might be so low, so low, because they're already down. It's a victim. So victim, they don't have the power. Sometimes, obviously, a lot of them don't have the hope. So I get in my little shop, I designed this yesterday. I want to introduce this. So today, I. I uh, hope you all uh, agree with me. Today we're going to declare today is the, the day is for no more cancer victim. It says a victim is powerless and lacks hope. And so we are all cancer survivor angels. And it says uh, we have hope and power. We have hope and power because, we, again, the, the fact that, and I qualify and I explain this is where our cancer survivor angels. And those who have family members, they're here for a reason. Angels are sent by God. Angels are gifted. They have gifts. They have a message. They have a mission. And the fact that, you know, a person who's been diagnosed on a Monday with the cancer and they live through to Tuesday morning, they're a survivor. And so it's my energy, my commitment, my drive is to just honor, honor you, honor you. Why? Because you're the one who's physically going through in the body. I'm only allowed, not only, but I'm uh, afforded the opportunity to share and you know, emotionally or understanding, try to understand that. So, so I want to honor you, encourage you, support you, because you can support you to tell your story. And with your story, you're telling about 21 years survived, 11 years survived. Oftentimes, people say, well, my friend and my family, you're, they have cancer. And you say, oh, that's, I'm so sorry. I'll be praying for them. But guess what? We never hear their story. So it's through the story 
that we can live. It's through the story that we can develop hope. And they said, well, when I got the diagnosis, I continued to pray. I prayed more. I began to pray. Well, I stopped smoking. I stopped eating this. I started exercising. So it's giving people direction. So you become teachers and educators and informers and agents, change agents for that. So um, with that, today I'm honored and, uh, to celebrate this day, um, the 16th day of April. And uh, we celebrate here in Brockton. The spring is in the air day and um, for a new day. So today we're going to bless the cancer survivors and those who are here to represent cancer survivors. And I want you to take with you a gift to them. And we're going to, the ceremony is going to light a candle and maybe say a few words in their honor. Maybe ask God to continue to, uh, to bless their soul or bless their body, bless the family of the person who's there. So there's enough candles for each of us. And then we're also going to give um, flowers. Because again, the flowers of springtime just kind of open it up, and the flowers is a sign of life and a new beginning in, in nature. And we have some chocolates, so give you some energy. And then we've got some balloons, just kind of like to create the spring uh, in atmosphere. And those, and we brought some refreshments. Those who have to go, please feel free to take your lunch or something to drink. And so at this time, I'm again honored to have um, our dear mayor uh, here with us to celebrate. And we also have some, some other representatives here. We're going to have a few words from them. And then, uh, and then we, yes. Yes, thank you. Yes, sir. So I want to thank uh, Dr. Bruce and Team Veronica. And quite honestly, I just want to thank all of you. Uh, every single person in this room has been touched by cancer, uh, many, many of us for many different uh, types of cancer. Um, my dad just got uh, five years clean of prostate cancer the other day. Um, my sister-in-law and my mother-in-law are both cancer, angel survivors. Um, my grandmother passed from breast cancer, and as doctors said, she was diagnosed in the 70s, and it was taboo to talk about cancer. You would say the big C. But she had breast cancer, and that was even a double taboo. You would never say breast cancer. And I remember going to my Nana's house on 388 Green Street, cutting her grass one day, and I walked in, and she didn't have her wig on. And that was taboo to see her bald. But to me, she was my Nana. I knew she was sick, but I loved her the same. And she ultimately passed in my house. She moved in with us at her last uh, couple of years. And, you know, I always remember at the age of uh, 14, my grandmother passing. And, um, you know, cancer is a disease that um, is, is a killer, um, but it doesn't kill our soul, it doesn't kill our spirit. And so uh, this is Holy Week, and as a Christian, tomorrow's a special day of Easter. I want to thank uh, you for sharing your stories, for being here. I want to thank Dr. Bruce for being really the catalyst uh, for positivity. Uh, we are better together. Uh, we will continue to fight the evils and ravages of cancer, but it's not going to beat us as a community. We're the city of champions, and each and every one of these angels are champions in their own right. So God bless each and every one of you. I wish you and all a happy Easter, and uh, let's continue to work together uh, to beat back cancer. Thank you, Dr. Yeah, Bruce. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, uh, Mr. Allen Jacobson has to go. He's been here. He has another um, urgent visit to make. So we want to come up and have a few words. And he too is a, a cancer survivor. <laughs> Thanks for all you're doing, James. This is uh, making a difference. It's going to make a difference in more and more people's lives. Team Veronica. So my name is Alan Jacobson. I'm 68 years young. And uh, my second wife, his name was Flo Creed Jacobson. We married in 1990. And in 2003, she was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. So right away, we started doing organic foods, you know, be careful how we ate, try to exercise more. And she lived two more years. She was a Boston police officer um, that broke the glass ceiling six times. Amazing woman, strong, well-loved. And she passed away. And how did that change my life? Uh, I haven't had meat, pork, or even a donut in 30 years. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I still got colorectal cancer two years ago. And I'm a veteran, a Navy veteran. So I went to the VA. And they're incredible at the detail and help and care they give you. One, minimal surgery. Uh, remove the mucosa and submucosa tissue and 
I've been in uh, every three months since then, every four months, for testing, whatever testing they need. I'm ready to go. And I've been clear since, so I'm healthy. And uh, I'm grateful that I'm still here. You know, family and friends makes, make a huge difference. So I graduated high school with Marilyn Simmons in the back. She's going to talk as well. And so she has a great story. But, you know, I'm a quote person. One of my favorite quotes is by Albert Einstein. He said, there are two ways to live your life. One is though nothing is a miracle, and the other way is though everything is a miracle. So I think everything is a miracle. The fact if you believe in the Big Bang Theory, that 13.5 uh, billion years ago, it was a big boom from a little spark. What's, what, what do we have around us? We're 13 and a half billion years of recycled energy. So how we go through life, you know, it's our choice. Um, do we want to think of others? Do we want to think of just ourselves? And I know when um, we have a nonprofit named in Flo's name, Flo Creek Jacobson Initiative. And so we're here to help children through mindfulness programs, through contributing to other uh, nonprofits as well. And um, so, you know, it's um, putting your best foot forward at any time, doing the right thing. <laughs> so, is that your grandson? My grandson, yeah. What's his yeah. name? Omari. Omari. Does he want to say a few words? You want to say some words, Omari? Hi, Omari. Say hi. Why are you saying hi? Say hi. It's Veronica's nephew. <laughs> So basically, James is, is, is changing the way we see people who survive cancer. You know, years ago, not to wax too philosophical, but it would be fight cancer, and then it became cure cancer. And I think the new way to look at it is prevent cancer, you know, educate. And that's what this whole program is about, is educating people. So thank you for coming. Thank you. Great to see everybody. Thank you. Now we can have the Honorable Senator Mike Brady come up and say a few words. Thank you, Dr. Bruce. And um, most of us here have all gone through family members. I, I, my uh, mother had colon cancer, so I have to get checked every few years. And my father suffered cancer, and he was a survivor. He had strokes later. But then I had a girlfriend, Frances Mara, who grew up in Brockton, and she had breast cancer. And, like the taboo, nobody wanted to talk about things, and we have to talk about it because we have to reach out because we are a community in Brockton working together. And, you know, even, even the medical industry, we have some wonderful, wonderful doctors here. But the pharmaceutical industry, and I, saw, I watched Channel 2 WGBH a lot, and there was a story about a doctor who fought with the pharmaceutical industry because they felt, oh, there's, there's not a definite thing that this is going to be a cure, so they didn't want to invest in it because, you know, they're all trying to make money, and they found that this could help slow down the growth of cancer and maybe hopefully cure cancer, but yet all these big pharmaceutical companies did not want to invest in it. And he, the, the, thank God for this doctor who was just one person. He fought and fought. He, he went to New York City. He went to other parts, to Denver, Colorado, and finally they approved um, for treatment. And, and like the doctor said, prevention is the key. We all have to work together to take care of ourselves. And, you know, our lives are very busy sometimes, and this is, a, as I may have mentioned, this is a very important Holy Week. We have Easter and other religions are celebrating Passover, and the Muslims celebrate different important religious beliefs, and we have to work together, and that's how we will come up with a total cure to save all of us. Uh, there's a lot of things going on in the world today with pandemic and violence and everything else, but we will not get it done alone. I want to thank you, Dr. Bruce, because... You've brought this to the forefront of attention. I'm grateful to your new facility on Dover Street. But I think working together, all of us, will help uh, solve this dreadful, dreadful disease that has affected so many of our family members and friends. And uh, I think we'll finally put an end to this. So I'm just grateful to be your senator. And any help we can be at the state level working on legislation, getting funding, please don't hesitate to contact us. And, and I know our mayor is doing a great job. We have Councilor Azak here as well. And I'm, Sure, she's going to get up and speak as well. So, thank you, everyone, for taking time out of your busy schedule, and God bless you and happy Easter tomorrow. At this time, we have um, City Councilor Shirley Asak. Shirley, come on up. Yeah, Shirley, she is uh, a real jewel in this area. 
and um, and I had the pleasure of meeting her last year, last year, and uh, it's been a really good connection, and she's been supporting us every step of the way, and so I'm, we're so grateful because uh, when you support us, you're supporting us. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. That's mm. us. So I wasn't expecting to say a few words, but um, I it was an honor and a it was we met unexpectedly, Dr. Bruce and I. It was uh, during the campaign, so um, I we have grown a friendship over the past year or so, and it's my honor to be here and just to say a few words. So cancer affects all of us uh, in one way or another, whether it's friends, family members, and. Um, Hearing your stories really, um, you know, they, it touches us. We don't really think about it every day, but when you hear stories of survivors and, um, you know, with stories of friends that have gone through this um, horrible disease, it's, um, it's our job to bring awareness. And I think that's what Dr. Bruce does. And um, it's, it's my honor to help bring awareness. So I've, um, I've offered him to come before us, uh, before the city council also to do the, a resolve to bring uh, Veronica's story uh, to life. And, you know, he's, he's relentless. Like, he just goes on and on like the Energizer uh, Bunny because he just, he feels very strongly about this and his passion comes through to us. Um, and we want to be able to help everybody. We want this to be in the past. We want to bring um, awareness to help people overcome this disease. So I look forward to the day when, you know, cancer diagnosis is much lower or, you know, people aren't getting diagnosed as much. And, um, you know, like I t tell them every day, whatever I can do in the community, and I know he has the support of our mayor and our um, state, de uh, state center and state delegation, whatever we can do to help uh, combat this disease, that's what we're here for. So we support you. We support Team Veronica, and we support the community. So thank you. Um, at this time, so I want to thank them, those for the making those remarks, and it's really great. Appreciate. Now I'm just gonna have a couple words from some of the survivors. You want to come up and share your story? Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Marilyn, and I'm a 21-year survivor. And. Thank you. I went in for a routine mammogram at 48 and was told that they saw something suspicious. And so they did an ultrasound and it turned out to be cancer. So I had to have the myomectomy and uh, they had to take out lymph nodes too because it was in, they took out 11 and it was in four of the lymph nodes. So it was a very aggressive type of cancer. And I was a level four. I had two young children. My daughter was a senior in high school. My son was in college and um, she didn't want to go away to college because she didn't want to leave me. But I said, whether I live or die, you have to live and I'm not going anywhere. And here I stand. But um, I feel it's very important to share my story because there's a lot of people who have loved ones like we've mentioned before who don't know the struggle. And for you to be able to say the struggle, tell people the struggle, and that it's not a death sentence, it's hope. You know, you just have to believe in, like, I tell people, whatever higher power you believe in, this is a time to call on it. And uh, that's what I did in my case. I, it, my kids were away at school when I was going through the worst, and it was me and the dog. And um, when I uh, finished my treatment, he got bone marrow cancer and he succumbed to his cancer, so it, it, it was very hard. But I'm still here, and I'm glad to share my story. And if I can, I'd like to sing a song. Yes, sure. I don't feel no waste time. I've come too far from where I started from, nobody told me the road would be easy. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me.
Hi, everybody. My name is Joyce. I'm an 11-year survivor. And I was a stage four. And you see me still wear my mask. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> I'm still going to wear my mask. So, you know, no matter what. But um, um, I, I was sitting back there so I can, you know, decide what I'm going to say. But it's nothing more than what Marilyn said. And I, I was diagnosed um, April 4th of 2000, 2011, something like that. But um, when I was diagnosed, I, you know, I didn't feel anything because I didn't know how to feel. When somebody tells you you have cancer, but you, you know, you don't know how to take it. But you know people around you had cancer or whatever, you never think that it's gonna be you. But then when they diagnose you with cancer, you're like, me? I heard about my friends. I heard about this person, my, you know, but me? But I never said why. Because sometimes God gives you something, and he, he, he takes you through something that you don't think you're going to go through. But he's testing you to see how much faith that you have. And that was my faith, because I'm like, I'm not going to ask them why, because I know he give, you know, he has a reason for, you know, for me, because I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't been down this journey so long. It's just like, I can, you know, I love telling people my story, because if I tell this person, that person, because we have people that doesn't want to talk about it because they're afraid. And then they have people that they, you know, supposed to be family members or whatever. Ah, uh, you know, you okay, whatever. But you don't know what goes through that person's head. Once somebody tells you you have cancer, it mess up your head. It mess up your head. It mess up your heart. You know, and it's just like, you know, it's just lucky I, you know, like the senator said, you have good doctors. You have real good doctors. If you trust your doctor, you can get through anything. Because, you know, God gives them wisdom and stuff too. But if you have one that's going to be there for you when you need, it, need somebody to talk to or need somebody to go to, that's a good doctor. Because you have some doctors, like, they'll see you because they have to. But then when you see them outside the building, they are like they don't know you. And that's, that's, that's not good. That's not good. Because I didn't see it happen. It happened to me. I seen it happen to some of my friends. And I have this one doctor. I had him for like almost 20 years. But he finally retired. And when I was diagnosed with cancer, he knew before me. Because like they communicate with Boston Medical, Dorchester House and Boston Medical. They and he knew before me. But he wanted me to tell him. But when I went to see him, he cried more than I did. And I'm like, what are you crying? You don't have cancer. I'm the one with the cancer. But he was there for me. When I went for my appointments, he called and asked me how the appointments come, you know, how was my appointments and stuff. I was on my way out here to the, to the, to the store, and I had a phone call. And I was driving, and I'm like, Who's calling me? I don't answer my phone when I'm driving. And my daughter said, Mom, you need to take this. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She said, and then I pulled over. And it was my doctor from Dorchester House to call me and ask me how I was doing or how I was feeling. I'm like, no doctor called you and asked you how you're feeling or how you're doing. Because once they see you, they don't, you know, they don't did their job. But he was there for me. He you know, called me all the time. But um, this is not an easy journey when you're going by yourself. Because I have friends that went through it, didn't have no family members going through treatments with them or whatever. But when I found out, 
you know, because we was going through the same stuff. I used to go to, uh, I used to beat them to their appointments because I'm like, nobody should go through this journey by themselves. Going through chemo, going through radiation, they shouldn't have to go with it by themselves. But they, they didn't want to tell their family either. So I'm like, okay, I'm part of your family. So I, you know, a couple of times I beat them to the, like, what are you doing here? I said, I'm here for you. But most of the time I go because it's a day of my appointment, so I'm already there, so, you know. But I love, if you give me a flyer, I love giving it out to somebody. Uh, that's me. <laughs> that's me because we used to, I used to set up tables for BMC and, you know, give out information and stuff. And I love giving out information because you can't keep it to yourself if somebody else needs it, you know. And, you know, sometimes I'm sitting at my appointment and somebody sit beside me and they crying or whatever. I don't be nosy. I don't ask them why they're crying. And next thing they know, they're talking to you. And I say, I know how you feel. It's, you can't tell somebody you don't know how, you know how they feel when you don't. But if it's a person that's going through what you're going through, you know how they feel. Because you can, you can relate to them. And sometimes people just want to sit, want you to listen. And I does that too. <laughs> I listen. I give out flyers. So you got a flyer here, I can take it. You know? So that, that's, you know, I thank Dr. Bruce for, you know, because with this pandemic, I couldn't go to do cookouts anymore because that's why I was doing the flyers for BMC and stuff like that. But I'm glad that he invited us here. So I appreciate it. Nice meeting you, Mayor, you. Senator, and everybody else. Thank, thank you. So at this, at this time, at this time, I'm going to have my uh, dear friend. She's a pastor in, in Randolph, and she may say a few words. And as I was saying, I see uh, Team Veronica as a great opportunity to bring together um, organizations that are also reaching out to help people, help the people in, in Brockton and other neighborhoods. And so, again, our um, we have no barriers. We don't care what, if the organization is doing the right thing. We want to support them. And we don't care if the person's from Randolph, they could be from Tallahassee, Mississippi, it doesn't matter because it's the person, not the geograph. Okay, so we want to extend also our arms and our support to her organization. She'll tell you briefly about her organization, how there may be some, some synergy between us and her organization. So, thank you. Introduce Good afternoon, everyone. Dignitaries, I greet you all. Uh, my name is Adeline DeJust. I'm a, by profession, I'm a teacher. I've been working in the Boston Public School for the past 23 years. <laughs> it is truly a pleasure to be here, and I thank you all for sharing your stories. I also have a story to share. I lost my mom last year. It was rather quick. She went to Brockton Hospital December 5th. They saw a mask on her head. And she just deteriorated from there. We lost her March 24th, 2021. Yesterday would have been her 75th birthday. And I just want to reiterate, thank you. I didn't think I was going to cry. I'm still mourning her loss. <laughs> reiterate the stories that you've shared. Um, it's not going to be going through this alone. It was just me. I had both of the, both my parents living with me. They moved from Florida. And um, they both had um, complications. I was going back and forth to the hospital between one and the other. And so um, at the end, you know, I prayed. I, you know, of course you do everything that you can. You try to get second opinion, change the eating habit, change everything, um, the lifestyle, et cetera, et cetera. But we lost at the end. So as you can see, I'm still mourning her loss, but um, thank you for sharing your stories. Um, with that said, because of 
Thank you, Dr. Bruce, for having me here. Thank you for having Team Veronica, the organization to support um, not just the survivors, but the families as well. And I want to also, I'm grateful for the opportunity to share what it is that we do in the community and how it's connected to the work that Dr. Bruce is doing with the Team Veronica. And I have a nonprofit organization as well. It's called Destiny Restored Ministries. And with Destiny Restored, it's basically helping our fellow man to live to their full potential. And we have several programs, some of which we haven't launched yet. But the one that is um, successful is the Food Pantry on Wheels. And we do need volunteers. <laughs> so please call me. <laughs> <laughs> so um, with the food pantry on wheels, it's mostly catered to elderly, independent elderly. And so if they, um, we know that they are on a fixed income, so we drive by the buildings and bring food to them regularly, um, weekly. And so um, we also have um, emergency gift cards if there's, um, and that goes towards anybody or single mom who has an emergency f in terms of food or milk, they need milk for the baby or whatever, and then we provide them with that. So that's one of the programs that we work on. We also work on educating the public. Um, last year, one of the first conference that we had was uh, a conference with, um, we invited a nurse and we invited a therapist because we're all closed in during COVID and we needed, you know, um, and, um, and that conference was very helpful, you know, from the feedback that I got from the community, um, that it was helpful because, you know, the therapists came on board and providing them with tactics, you know, um, different things that they can do so they don't go stir crazy while closed in. And then the nurse provided them with the necessary skills that they need to um, f um, cleanliness, hand washing, and hand sanitizing. And tomorrow, not tomorrow, next Saturday, we're going to have a, another conference and it's open and it's free to the public. It's um, Sharing Hope in Crisis and it's being um, sponsored by the Billy Graham Rapid Response Team um, by, those, by their chaplains. And those chaplains, they've been all over the world um, dealing with fire, all, all types of crisis, um, earthquakes, um, war, um, what are different disasters, and they will be coming in to present um, to us how we can cope, how we can help our fellow man. And uh, again, um, like I said, Destiny Restored Ministries like, um, is uh, basically what we do. We here to serve our community. We here to serve one another. And um, our website is www.destinyrm.org www.destinyrm.org and we would love to see you attend this conference because we all suffer loss you know I'm going through my loss we all are here we know somebody who's going through a crisis a trauma and we want to be able to say the right words to them we want to be able to say the right things just to get them moving to give them the encouragement to give them the strength to move to carry on so with that thank you so much for the opportunity Mayor, it's nice to meet you. Um, Senator, we've met a couple of times. I'm not sure, you probably don't even remember me, <laughs> but um, nice to meet you all. Thank you. Okay, well, I'm about to wrap this up and want to once again thank all those who came out to support this event. And there will be other events going along. We have scheduled a, a Cancer Resource Expo, and that's scheduled for uh, May 12th. And this is where we're hoping to bring representatives from the housing and banks and insurance, funeral homes, community agencies, nonprofits, a uh, variety of um, organizations and um, businesses under one roof so that we, they can begin uh, building relationships with people who may in the future or at that time need those services and stuff. So once again, I want to thank each of you for coming out and celebrating spring is in the air and we're about to light a candle. We're gonna ask the, the mayor and the senator to lead us uh, with lighting a candle and um, you'll be taking the candle with you as well. And so you may just want to say a few words 
as we light the candle and asking God's blessings upon them or thanking them for their journey or some uh, message you uh, want to say to them or on behalf of uh, the candle we light. And then once again, we'll be uh, giving you, you can also take a balloon away and celebrate. And so we have some balloons with smiles on it. And so, or we'll say you're special or uh, representing flowers. And so that's what we want to do. I want to thank my good friend, Jonathan, for coming out. He represents School on Wheels. And again, we find that, again, now that as a, a potential partner with what we do here, certainly because there are some families who may find themselves needing those services, particularly with children uh, who may be experiencing cancer as well. And so I want to thank you, once again, thank you, and there's some refreshments. And so at this time, we ask everyone to stand. We'll assemble around the table, and we'll begin lighting the candles, and we can take it. Uh, so before we do that, I want to um, offer a prayer. Heavenly Father God, we thank you for blessing us in this season. This is a season of life and a season of uh, restitution, uh, resurrection, also redemption. We, Lord, bless you this day. On tomorrow being Easter, we would thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, into our lives, into the universe, into this world, that we can uh, provide a great example, that we can be good human beings, be responsible to our uh, uh, to our God and also to, unto ourselves and to, certainly to each other. And that's what we're here for in the spirit of service, and that's what we want to do. And I um, ask you to continue to bless our families, our loved ones, the sick, the afflicted, the shut in everywhere. And those who are homeless, those who are hopeless, we ask you to continue to restore the hope, give them the hope that they need. Res uh, bless them with the resources that they need. And continue to bless us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. This is for my grandmother, uh, Beatrice Butler. Francis Myers and all our families and friends that have gone before us and suffered from cancer. John, do you have someone you would want to offer a prayer or a gratitude or something? Situation, from a situation that, like COVID, I can't even imagine running or asking anyone at this point, do they personally know someone or are they personally involved with that? So this is that one of those situations, those conditions that we have, um, as the senator said, it's about prevention. As uh, Alan said, it's about preventing, right? As a, uh, as a cancer survivor, um, uh, this is to probably the worst cancer of the world. That's the cancer of loss, the cancer of despair, that cancer of hopelessness, and that cancer of feeling that there's nothing you can do. This is to that cancer. Thank you. Okay. my mom, my aunt, <coughs> my grandmother, who all sadly succumbed to cancer, and my cousin, and, um, and also for my cousin Karen, who survived, she's a six-year survivor of breast cancer, so <laughs> it's all around us, all the time. And Jason, do you know someone who, okay? This is for my uncle who passed away from brain cancer. 
This is for my brother, my older brother who just been diagnosed with colon cancer in stage two or three. And he's be starting his treatment on Wednesday. Yeah. You know what's ironic that we have a politician lighting our candles. You know, we're supposed to be lighting up lighting, lighting the fires under them. <laughs> we are, we are, as the mayor and the city council myself, we are no better than anyone else here. We are all working together and we're all one team. So I gave my first candle to survive, uh, uh, but I'm going to light this one for someone who was very close to me and who I was named after. She was the first Shirley Azak who passed away almost um, 20 years ago from cancer. And thank you. Yes. Yes. But to thank, once again, thank all of you all for that, and may God bless the the candle light and that, the light that that uh, Jesus brought to us, that we will become that light that can be hidden. It will be the light on the hill. That light that never goes dim. So in our spirits, in our, our, our hearts that we can give and share and in, this, in the spirit of love, peace, and compassion, we offer that blessing. Amen. Amen. So I want to um, bless each of you with, again, on behalf of uh, Veronica, Bruce Butler, in a spirit of love and peace and compassion that you take this and you continue to spread love um, for God and for your family, and certainly for yourself. And we, we ask you to continue to carry this. Thank you, Doug. Yes, you all for doing this. And, uh, and again, you have a smiling face. So Thank you. Thank you, sir. And oh, this is my, this is my yeah. Oh, well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, you're welcome. Yes. Sorry. Uh, yes. 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 Yes.